I got back up to make another one. I'm going to try and wrap up the Ephesians. I only have one teaching a video and post that's like in the hopper. Sometimes I have two or three. And I'm going to just try and finish that one up in the next few days. And probably just post tag all these onto that one. So we'll finish that Ephesians study. I want to talk about... Uh, I have a friend, Albert Hoffman. You know, Albert has been working just about every day this week. I'm not sure if he worked today. Albert's a good old boy, and he's funny. And Albert was born in Alaska. And sometimes he talks about Alaska. I'm not sure if Albert is 65 or... There's a few of the guys on the street that actually, a few of them had a job this week. They're working. One of the local bars bought another bar that kind of went out of business, and they hired some of the guys. Now, Albert works. He works also with a local builder, pretty famous builder. I won't give the name, but he gets where I'm working today. With. So he's worked his whole life. They will not allow Albert to have identification in the city of Corpus Christi. Albert ha does not have his license or the ID or his original Alaska birth certificate, which most people don't. And he has attempted multiple times. Albert is on record on the police department file for various times he was picked up and arrested for PI over the years. His name, social security number, date of birth, everything shows up on the actual official computers of Nueces County. But they will not let him get an ID. Why? Oh, they had some particular thing that he's attempted a few times. He finally just jokes about it. And like, well, I'm not legal. I guess I wasn't born. They don't let him. There, there are other people that have grudges here within the community against Albert for various things. And I'm not going to get into that history. So because it's such a connected place, somebody must have put word out trying to get rid of these guys over the years. Like, we don't want the homeless here. We don't want so they just said, don't, just strike him off the list if he ever comes in. That, uh, that's terrible that it's run that way here in this community. You know, why so mad about, uh, look, I have Hispanic friends at the firehouse sometimes, you know, the guys that would speak Spanish. Sometimes if they're talking to one of the other guys and they want to say something, they might talk Spanish because they know that white guy don't know English. Some of the guys would get mad, but, but if you're in official proceedings, meaning like you are defending yourself before an official proceeding and a person doesn't speak Spanish. You don't have any sidebar conversations in Spanish. Everything has got to be in English. The, 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 the backwaterness of this place astounds me. It astounds me. Any official proceeding at the courthouse or anywhere else not racism, not you speak English because there are people that have official proceedings and you don't, you speak English for those reasons. People leave this area not because of the infrastructure problem. They see this. Now they blackballed Albert somehow for ever getting an ID. And he kind of laughs about it nowadays. And I guess I was never born, but they did that. You say, how do you know they did that? There's a few friends over the years, and when they had to uh, like get the IDs back, that's a problem. I mentioned uh, Charlie on the last video. Uh, not little Charlie, but Charlie Boy, who was like the nephew of Pops who passed away. But I remember one time he lost his wallet. I was there at the house, visiting Pops, helping him. He blew it, he got mad, because it is a big struggle. I have had friends, when they lost their IDs, and I've taken them and dropped them off and picked them up. And it's, you know, it's a couple of day type thing, and then you get a file. But there are people that uh, have to go to Aransas County for all types of getting this stuff done because they made it, they put stuff here in Oasis County. I had a friend that had to get the title, something to his vehicle. They made it impossible for him to do it. Not He's not homeless. So they got, like, stuff here that goes on. 
that makes this place not function properly. It's not just infrastructure. It's when you have a tight-knit group of people. And maybe somebody works here and for the city and he doesn't like Albert or whatever and he puts word out, takes the ride down, look, we've got this going on. All of that, when you watch the nice local news at night and KIII and they try to present like South Texas is a nice place and uh, KRIS News does a little more investigative journalism. But it's this stuff. It's this stuff. To me, it's sad, and much of the media, I've seen it and I've commented on it, but they have the real blatant uh, racism. This local media, the color times, things about whitey, not using the term, but the, they feel flagrantly. And I think that's, you shouldn't do that. And if you see that in the official, like, things, and, oh, this white guy thinks he's smart, and we'll just show him, guess what, boy? You didn't work enough in your life. You, you would qualify, white boy, for various things, but you didn't work enough. They did that as a jab. They did that as, let's see what he does now. Look, people that are dealing in professional business and all, they don't want, they expect stuff like that, you know, maybe at the street level. Not all the way into the agencies that are supposed to be professional in this community. <laughs> and like, you got to be kidding me. We're dealing with this thing. We have a federal courthouse here in Corpus Christi, as well as in Oasis County, and, but Social Security is federal. <laughs> and it's just like, it's the region has got a lot of problems here. All those videos I made like two years ago, and AKA uh, Little Mexico and all that. Look, a lot of that stuff is true. Sad to say. Sad to say, a lot of that stuff is true. And then I see like in Albert, they had, they, he had an altercation with the city cop many years ago. And so they just blackballed him. <laughs> this guy's never gonna get legal. Albert, look, he's working this week. And Albert worked throughout his life. And he's past 62. He would easily be able to, uh, also a white guy, he would easily be able to get just the regular social security. And he still works to this day. But they blackballed him from getting any identification. It's sad. And like I said, a lot of people that don't have any ID, maybe they've never been arrested, meaning all of their info is not on the official county stuff. But in Albert's case, all of that is there because they pull it up. One time a cop, he was telling me a story, they had to know uh, Albert's age for something. The cop just pulled it up. He said, yeah, he was born this, this is him, this is who he is. But none of that counts. They, they blackballed him. And it's sad. It's sad that people, they, they think a lot of this is a toy here in South Texas. Like a game. Like a game. I wonder, the few times that some of my friends died, I actually notified Social Security. I said, I want you to know that one of my friends did overdose. And you gave him and he was on the disability for a year. And I thought, you know, they never responded or any of that. And then I realized maybe they don't want to know. Maybe whoever is the uh, payee for that particular person that they approved, maybe they know that that payee is getting that money for another 10, 15 years after the death of the person. And that would also bring a lot more money if it's in the corruption thing into the coffers. But it's not supposed to be for that. It's not supposed to be for that. So I didn't get to go. I was laying down all day outside. Now, look, very rarely can I do that, but I'm dead tired. So I'm just getting up and talking. And I'm going to attempt to finish that Ephesians uh, study, which will be in a few days that will go up. I'll probably just have all these on that one. But if I were to just speak to the community, it's not that I totally have given up on this county or this city. I read a scripture, man, last night. I guess it was Isaiah. It's a, it was a rebuke. It's funny, it's coming to my mind. But it said, 
the city and the people that are called by my name, they bear my name, but yet they are not uh, speaking or doing my law or speaking in righteousness, but yet they take my name upon their lips. Now, as you go down in the chapter, it's a rebuke. Of course, that could apply to the natural city of Corpus Christi, Texas. But it's a rebuke to the people of God in the Old Testament, Israel. But then God says, there's a lot of things, fits the themes that's coming up in Ephesians. Then God says, before what I did in your life, before it happened, I showed it to you before it happened. I did it suddenly. And now things spring forth. And these are things you did not know. And even new things are happening. And I declared these things to you from the beginning, early on in your life. So when they happened, you would know that I did that. That the purpose that I had for you prevailed in your life. And so God gave you some vision, some insight, something in the beginning of your life. And that, that's that banner. That's that thing you say, man, this is where I'm heading the purpose God has for me. And then maybe through a process of time, finally there came a season where suddenly, maybe in a couple year period or whatever, suddenly it happened. And God says, and I knew you were obstinate. I knew that you were a sinner and a transgressor from your youth. But yet I still purpose to do this thing. <laughs> I would just say, I, I really feel like the time period, like a judgment period on this area, in this region, I prophesied in the sense that I felt this whole harbor bridge, the replacement. There was a very famous infrastructure project in Boston, <laughs> the Great Dig, I think they called it, but a lot of money comes in. Sometimes communities say, "Let's." the federal government's going to provide so much, and, and, and I see a very long term, I'll be gone by the time they're still going to have problems with that. It's a sign of this region. They, initially, we had a problem with the dredging. They wanted to dredge the port in coordination to get the water, the bottom of the port, deeper for the bigger vessels to come in. So when they tear down the beautiful harbor bridge and this new thing goes up, it's going to be higher. And so it will help the capacity. But then they have problems with the dredging thing and the company, or the Army Corps of Engineers, and now you're having a, they're kind of covering it up, but you're having somewhat of a debacle with the contractors that are building this new bridge. The subcontractors for the main engineering company that has the contract is not paying the subcontractors. What, what that could lead to, being they already got the contract from the government all to build this, that's just uh, federal money for this bridge, infrastructure. You, you could be looking at 20-something years down the road. And I think that's just a judgment. When, when the poor among you, regardless of race, I saw my friend Gabriel yesterday, Hispanic friend, Mexican friend. And Gabriel grew up here his whole life. And he always compliments me. And he has a drinking problem, Gabriel. He's a plumber. He was working this week. And he always says, John, I like you because you don't talk down to us. He lived here his whole life. He was in a couple rock bands, became a plumber. But Gabriel's been homeless for a long time. And right now he's living in town, in a certain place. But he came in a couple, yesterday he was in town, I said. And then I went to my prayer spot over the Oso, which I like. I didn't make it today. And I was with him during the day, and he had his three-wheel bike, which is kind of a story, I kid him about it. But he brought it into Flora Bluff from town. And then as he was he took it back into town over the bridge. And I was just walking up from my press spot. I laid there for maybe an hour and a half or two hours on the concrete. And he said, What are you doing, John? I said, Oh, Gabriel, this is my press spot, brother. I said, see the cross, there's a cross right there I put up. And so and I see my friends, whether Mexican or white, but then I see this. I see this corruption in this place. And it, it is, it, there's a racial tinge to it. And it's not from the normal 
Mexican friends, Hispanic friends I've known throughout my life. It's the people that are in the upper echelons. It's the ones that feel flagrantly they can mock a white person. Oh, we'll talk Spanish, whether you know it. Look, anything that's going on business-wise, it's not just the disrespect. You're preventing the person from maybe fully presenting himself in any official proceedings or whatever. What a disgrace you are. Utter and complete. And you boldly have the goal to say, oh, you would qualify for various things. But it's got to be like, right, a couple months before you die, then contact us. What a disgrace you are. At the fire department many years ago, they were the guys that were getting Social Security. I think they called it SSI. It was supplemental income because some of them did it and they, others criticized them. I didn't do it because they got on high blood pressure medicine and they're working at the time. The income was much higher when you're working as opposed to when you retire. And they were all getting in. There was some lawyer, Hispanic lawyer, and he get the few of those guys he said, look, we'll just get it. And they were all getting this Social Security SSI supplemental or making, you know, fifty, sixty thousand a year, whatever it was at that time. It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace what they do. It's very sad. The city was called by the name, but it, there's a disgrace here, okay? Sorry.